deflection in beams. Developing a basic understanding of how structural systems behave under applied loads is an important part of structural engineering education. By behavior structures, I mean how they displace and deform, and how stresses develop and propagate in their members. The ability to visualize or to have a qualitative understanding of the behavior of structures contributes to the development of an insight that shapes structural engineering judgment. This lecture focuses on a qualitative approach for drawing the deformed shape of beams under applied loads. Let's start with a simple example. Here is a simply supported beam subjected to a downward load. How does the beam deflect? Downward, right? Like this. Common sense suggests that if we push on a beam, it bends downward. What may not be intuitively obvious, though, is how the beam behaves at the supports. How does the support restrict deformation? Let's examine the effect of a pin or roller support on beam deformation. If a beam is resting on a pin or roller, then the support prevents the beam from deflecting at the point of contact. That is, the beam cannot move up or down at that point. However, it can rotate. As you can see here, the beam has no vertical deflection at joints A or B where the supports are located, but both joints have rotated. Joint A has rotated clockwise, joint B has rotated counterclockwise. So a pin connection or a roller connection prevents deflection but allows rotation in beams. How about a fixed support? How does it affect beam deformation? A fixed support prevents both deflection and rotation at the point of contact. Here is a cantilever beam with a fixed support at A. The beam bends downward, but at A it remains horizontal. That is, the beam neither deflects nor rotates at a fixed support. Here is another example. The beam rests on a roller support at the left end and is fixed at the right end. How should we draw the deformed shape of the beam? Here is what we know. The beam has a general downward deflection away from the supports. At A, the beam has no deflection, but it rotates. At B, there is neither a deflection nor a rotation. Here is the deformed shape that satisfies these constraints. As you can see, the beam has a downward deflection within the segment. At the roller support, the beam has no deflection, but it rotates. At the fixed support, it remains horizontal with no deflection or rotation. What about this beam? How does it deflect? Here we have no deflection or rotation at C, downward deflection in segment BC, and a clockwise rotation, but no deflection at B. Therefore, in the absence of any loads applied to segment AB, the beam is going to deflect like this. Zero deflection and rotation at C. Downward deflection in BC. The deflection starts decreasing past the point of maximum, going back to zero at B, where the beam is forced to turn clockwise. Since there is no load pushing down on segment AB, the segment deflects upward following the direction established at B. Here are a few more examples illustrating the process of drawing the deflected shape of beams. Here, the beam deflects downward under the load in between the supports. Consequently, there is a clockwise rotation but no deflection at the left support and a counterclockwise rotation with no deflection at the right support. Since the beam is not restrained at A and segment AB is not subjected to any loads, the segment deflects upward. Similarly, segment CD is forced to move upward as shown. In this beam, the middle segment behaves similarly to the previous example. The beam deflects down in segment BC with a clockwise rotation at B and a counterclockwise rotation at C. But since there is a pin at A, the deformation curve needs to return to A. This forces segment AB to deflect upward. Similarly, the beam has a zero deflection at D. Therefore, the beam needs to deform upward in segment CD like this. This beam is similar to the beam in the previous example. Here, however, there is a fixed support at the right end of the beam. 
The beam deflects downward in segment AB with a clockwise rotation at A and a counterclockwise rotation at B. The rotation at B forces the beam to deflect upward in segment BC, which in turn causes the beam to rotate clockwise at C. Consequently, the beam deflects downward in segment CD with a zero rotation at D. This beam deflects downward, but the deflection curve, also called the elastic curve, has a zero slope at A and B. The elastic curve for this beam has a zero slope at A, a negative slope at B, and a positive one at C, so the elastic curve looks like this. Finally, the elastic curve for this beam looks like this. There are times, however, that the overall shape of the elastic curve is not intuitively obvious. For example, consider a beam subjected to a concentrated moment, as shown here. You may not be able to figure out how the beam deflects by visual inspection. In this case, we can use the relationship between bending moment and deformation in the beam to draw the elastic curve. By convention, we know that a positive moment in the beam causes a concave up deflection like this. And the beam deflects down when bending moment is negative, like this. So if we know how bending moment varies in the beam, we can determine the shape of the elastic curve. For this beam, we know that the left reaction is downward with a magnitude of m over l, and the right reaction is upward, having a magnitude of m over l. So the moment in the left segment is linear, negative, and decreasing in magnitude, like this. Since there is a clockwise concentrated moment at the midpoint of the beam, there is going to be a jump in the moment value from negative m over 2 to positive m over 2. The amount of the jump is equal to the magnitude of the concentrated moment. Therefore, bending moment in the right half of the beam is linear, positive, and decreasing, as shown here. Now we should be able to draw the elastic curve using the information embodied in the moment diagram. The beam bends concave down in the left half, since moment is negative there, but the right half of the beam bends up, like this, since moment is positive there. Putting these two pieces together, we end up with the entire elastic curve for the beam. As our last example, let's draw the elastic curve for this beam. I'm going to use the beam's moment diagram to help figure out the overall shape of the elastic curve. First, let's calculate the support reactions. Now, draw the shear and moment diagrams. If you are not sure how this is done without formulating the shear and moment equations, See lecture SA09. Note that the moment diagram has a positive region and a negative region. Therefore, the beam is going to deflect down in the positive region like this. And it's going to deflect up in the negative region like this. Now, putting the two parts together, we get this. Keep in mind that this is an exaggerated shape of the elastic curve, and the drawing is not to scale. Yet, the drawing helps us better understand how the beam behaves and deforms under the applied loads.